All right. Let's fade that out. Hello, Sibyl. Welcome to Logic Live. All right, everyone. My name is Andy. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you here again today. And uh, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Got a million things to press here. You know, I, I was just remarking that we use a piece of software every day that has like 57 billion buttons. And still, for some reason, uh, it has fewer buttons than Zoom. <laughs> so um, my name is Andy. Welcome to Logic Live. Uh, before we kick things off today, I would like to welcome our newest sponsor, which is AJA. AJA develops an extensive range of solutions for the professional video and audio market, from conversion devices to IO solutions, digital recorders, cameras, and more. The team at AJA has always been a friend of the Logic community, sponsoring prizes for One Frame of White and the NAB parties, and they make the best gear out there. So if you're looking for anything in the IO market, be sure to get it from AJA. AJA. We, can we can't fix the text module, but if you need video IO, we've got you covered. Thank you, Steve Losey, <laughs> for that one there. And Logic Live is also brought to you by Synesis Oceana. Solutions, integration, and support for digital content creators. These guys are my personal uh, reseller. I've worked with them for 15 years. I could not do what I do without, uh, without these guys. And uh, uh, I can't stress enough how valuable the relationship is with a reseller, especially now that we're working remotely. So if you are working remotely and you need anything, definitely reach out to Synesis at Synesis.io. Synesis Oceana, supporting flame artists since 1997. All right, let's get down to business. Stop sharing the old screen here. And I would like to welcome to Logic Live uh, a guy who I uh, first met several years ago. Um, his name is Brian Higgins. He's a flame artist and creative director at Flavor in Chicago. Uh, we've hung out at many an NAB together. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. And, hey, Andy. Uh, hey, most hey, Logic. Uh, I also had the pleasure of presenting with Brian at the Chicago user group meeting last year, which was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'm excited to have him on board. Welcome aboard, man. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks for inviting me. I'm really, really honored to be here and uh, always impressed to be surrounded by a group of such fine people. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. So there's oh, the chat. Okay. okay. I've never, this is my first Zoom webinar. So please bear with me as I kind of get, get through everything. Uh, Chicago Zoom one, that's my box there. So let me go over to screen sharing. And if I go share screen, host atten disabled attendee screen sharing. Uh oh. Hmm. Hold on. Let me um, enable go. Start attendee video. screen share. Start. Ah, here we go. So oh, start video. Here we go. I have, I have a thing. All right. And if I go share screen, I can't make it big. Um, All right, hold on. You said it, not me. Uh, hey those were your words, not mine. Uh, yeah. But I, but it's recorded now, so don't worry. I'm uh, only 42. Me, it still works. I swear. Here, have a Terminator. <laughs> hold on. Let me. Um, let me try this. Aha! Uh -huh. All right, you you want you want to give it a shot now? Uh, yeah, if we go advanced. Content for a second can, and I do not want optimized screen share for video clip on, right? That was the oh, bad, hell the bad no. choice. Okay, that's off. All right, yeah. great. Uh, we hey. should see a Terminator. Do we see a T1000? All right. You know it. Uh, cool. Is it playing? All right. Yeah. All right. So that's our old reel. I'm not going to bother you guys with our reel from 2014. I just wanted to have something up. So, <laughs> um, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I am, unlike all of your other guests that you've had, probably not going to show you anything that you don't know or groundbreaking because we're all fairly professional and amazingly brilliant and talented artists. However, uh, I am going to be showing some of the work that uh, I did with my team at Flavor uh, a few years ago. Uh, that's probably one of the coolest projects that I've worked on in the last couple of years. And I found it really exciting and really fun. And I hope that you guys will too. And uh, happy to take any questions that you guys might have about it. Uh, and just kind of, I was thinking I'm just going to talk through it and then we take it from there. How does that sound to y'all? Sounds great, man. Go for okay. it. Okay. All right. So this is a project I work on um, with, uh, actually, I should back up and give you guys a little, a little, uh, info about flavor and cutters and all that stuff. I know some of you already know this, Randy, sorry for boring you with it. Uh, flavor is the visual effects, uh, motion graphics, finishing, color, CG, all that stuff, wing of Cutters Studios, which is the parent company that owns Cutters, uh, Flavor. Our audio company is called Another Country. We have a production company called Dictionary. Uh, we had an interactive company called Picnic. I don't know if we do anymore. They were kind of stealth for a bit. Uh, we have offices in Chicago, Detroit, Los Angeles, New York, and Tokyo. 
Uh, Flavor has offices in Chicago, LA, uh, Detroit, and sort of New York. Yeah, and New York. New York counts because most of their high milk are here. Um, and we work on all sorts of cool projects. It's a company mostly owned by editors. Uh, it is owned privately. The editors, many, most of the editors are partners, uh, or most of the partners are editors, let me rephrase that. Uh, so we have been, I've been lucky to be there for 17 years and we've been blessedly immune from holding company bullshit uh, and all sorts of other stuff like that that I've seen boil the markets here in Chicago and all over the world. Uh, as such, because we have an editorial focus, it means that most of our work at Flavor tends to be more just traditional commercial finishing. So some coloring, some finishing, some cleanups here, some phone comps there, screen comps, there are the odd header face replacement and that's about it. Uh, in Chicago in particular, the management decided when the English company showed up a few years ago that trying to beat them at, the own, at their own game was not a winning move and to just kind of focus on the B plus jobs for visual effects, which has worked out great for us. Uh, but it's kind of disappointing because we see all the amazing work coming through town and we don't even really generally get to bid on it because it's going to people, the companies that have rosters of insanely talented CG artists uh, that are, you know, in, in LA, New York, London, Mumbai, wherever, and we just like, we can't, they, the owners didn't want to build out to compete with that. So, but every once in a while, a job like this falls under the radar and the people that uh, our clients don't realize that they can go to one of those places and instead come to us and we go, hell yeah, we can do that. Uh, and so we got to stretch our legs a little bit out of our normal, uh, normal ballpark and to make a really awesome CG soccer stadium with a crowd and do a bunch of like heavy, heavy visual effects stuff for us. So the, this was a spot for, uh, for Nissan uh, for their, uh, it was during the 2018 World Cup, it was like a World Cup tie-in and the whole premise of it was there was in 1986 in the World Cup quarterfinals, semifinals, quarterfinals between Argentina and England, uh, there's a world famous soccer player named Maradona and forgive me, I'm not a sports guy, you guys probably already know this and I'm, I'm repeating it but if you don't, here's the, bat, the backstory for the spot. There's a guy named Maradona and he um, scored a goal uh, they called the hand of God goal where he went up for a header and the referees couldn't see what he was doing because uh, his back was to the uh, to the refs and they they said he said he headed it and everyone that saw him on the other side saw him hit it with his hand and do a handball which shouldn't have counted and it would have been a tie game instead of them beating England uh, in 1986 and so the premise of the spot was what if we had all this amazing car around you technology uh, and could ima could reimagine this play uh, and look at it from different angles and use all their you know science and all that stuff and I don't know if you guys have been on jobs like this and I'm sure we've all been on projects like this where basically the director shot a 90 and the only way to understand the whole thing that's going on is if you've been in all the meetings for it it just flies by so <laughs> fast and like you're like wait why is there, there is that all those people were on our, the Argentinian team now there's a guy diving across the frame from like wearing everyone's colors I what's going on there and it's like just shut up and watch it someone sold it and they got to you know they shot the whole thing on like vintage anamorphics and it was gorgeous and sure. all of that so um I will play the I'm gonna play the spot for you and then I'm going to play the rough cut for you to see where we came from and then kind of talk through some basic uh, challenges that we had on it and, uh, and take you through a couple of shots and take you through some elements. So here is the spot. And oh, by the way, we have no audio, but we do have subtitles. Uh, so I apologize for that. Let's go full frame and play it down. Oh, the subtitles are being cropped off because webcasting is a monster. Okay. Um, In a world. Yeah. Imagine having the power to change the way we look at the world that could change history. Shorts were a lot into the tighter future. back then. They were. They were. This is game-changing technology, the, the kind that put, Nissan puts at your reach here and now. Innovation that excites Nissan. I'm not a voiceover talent. I'm sorry. No, I think you've got a second career like a, in your future. Me me and everybody else. Do you guys know if there's a way to ban voiceover talent from trying to contact you on LinkedIn, by the way? They're like, uh, <laughs> like, like bugs. Like I have creative directors to my title and they all think they want to book me. I get like three invites a day from voiceover talent. I'm like, stop, I, I can't hire you, please. I don't, eh, all right, fine. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, it's this, you know, gorgeous anamorphic footage. They rented out like an airplane hangar somewhere in Van Nuys for all the interior shots. Um, they got all the cars, there's a GTR in there that we had to turn the taillights off on. Um, the MoGraph people had a field day with this doing all the like kind of high tech 
uh, future UI design stuff. Uh, in this one, we had to put, yeah, I'll get through on a shot by shot basis. So he's got this little remote and that controls the hologram. Uh, and again, this, this is where we're getting into like, well, you needed to be into all the meet, in all the meetings to understand what's happening. So this guy is the host and he's got this remote control that looks kind of like a plexiglass iPhone uh, and can control, take us back into the past and look at these vintage uh, soccer players running down the field, kicking the ball, kick, the play happens, the, the announcer can't believe what's happening. He saw the goal and then he says, wait, let's back up, freeze his time. We reverse and we see that. And at this point, we got, or after we finished this, we got a note from Nissan saying, we can't actually see the ball hit his hand because that would be taking a stance on whether he hit the ball with his hand or not. And we don't want to be that controversial. So we had to rechange the freeze frames and timings and move the CG ball after we've done it and all that stuff. So you can see that it kind of, it looks like it touches, but it's really not. We swear it's hovering and uh, it's not touching him, uh, even though it looks like it is or isn't it. And then there was another play, I guess, and I forget, this is two years ago and I forgot what game it was, but it was some, you know, the Netherlands uh, going over and he, he pretended to trip and he really just jumped over the guy and you can see him give a little ding, wink, and that's the end. So that's the spot. Um, and here is the rough cut. I'll play that down real quick. And just kind of taking some, some of the plates. Your description of this is like one of those real music videos, you know, where it's, it's, they. they... <laughs> yeah, I, I needed. To, I'm trying to trying to tread a fine line between entertaining y'all and getting fired. So uh, I think we're okay. This is this was yep. two two or three years ago, and uh, Nissan, frankly, has much much larger problems right now than me being a smart ass on the internet. <laughs> Did you see a thing where they, their like CEO fled Japan and they smuggled them out in a suit in a, in a box? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say in a, that in a face case. <laughs> I was just going to do that um, that thing that we do on like podcasts and say like, hey, I just heard, you know I did listen to this uh, excellent NPR podcast about like the smuggling out of Carlos Gosen or whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But I uh, oh. just did that. So. So I'm sorry. I'm a bad guest. I stole your thunder. That's why I'll never be a comedian. Um, <laughs> Okay, so various plates here. Uh, you can see that he's, we have a car take, we have a guy take, uh, and then we have the, the awesome circle wipe of the players on the stage at the Cal State Fullerton Soccer Stadium. Um, and you can see that they helpfully put green screen behind the net there for us, which we really appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to do a whole stadium and like, oh, we had, yeah, we had a couple of 25s and that's what you get, you get the net. Um, so the stands are empty. They did have some crowd, um, but they were, production was, un was unable to shoot tiles for us. And we did that usual, that dance where the, the production company is like, well, we need to have a, a crowd on there, but we don't have budget. Like, well, we didn't bid for a crowd. So uh, why don't you shoot some tiles for us? And they're like, okay, sure. And so they shot this for us and handed it to us. We're like, okay, what do we do? So that, that, this, this brought us into the, um, you know, we're not a large, uh, we, we are somewhat international post-production facility, but we're not, we can't just whip one of these up uh, out, of, out of thin air. So uh, I'm not saying that we did this, but if you were to look around, there is a gentleman, a very enterprising 3D artist who has, he's probably made a decent living for himself on Turbo Squid and he's made, uh, just about any stadium you can think about. Not all, not any, not all, any and all stadiums, but many in Madison Square Garden, you know, uh, whatever. Football stadiums, baseball stadiums, like realistically modeled stadiums uh, of, of various persuasions with animated crowds in them that are baked in with geometry cycles that require, we had to buy a V-Ray plugin. I mean, hypothetically, we would have had to buy a V-Ray plugin to make the uh, crowd inst instancing work, uh, but they're reasonably priced. Uh, for what it would take and, and uh, you know, you can get them and then have your smaller CG department, uh, you know, chop, chop and kit bash the stadiums into something appropriate for what we were trying to do, which was in this case, we were trying to match the Estadio Azteca in Mexico City from 1986. And there's lots of reference out there. Uh, and so we took all the reference from that. Uh, definitely didn't buy a stadium with people on it from Turbo Squid and handed it to our CG department who then chopped it up and changed the colors to be appropriate uh, to the mm -hmm. teams at the time and all that. So um, 
uh, you could definitely not do that if you were interested right. in it's good to know not that, having that a full CG stadium uh, yeah, department. It's good to know that that's, that's, that's an option to not do. Yeah. It's, it's the option of not doing that is, is out there. It's, it's totally shops out like there. yours and mine. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a far cry from the, I, 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 did you see the amazing, like the mill had like this stadiumizer thing that they came out with a couple of years ago, where it was this whole procedural thing in Maya and there's, you see the artist over the shoulder moving sliders and like the number of uh, staircases are changing and the tiers are all procedurally shuffling around is brilliant. Uh, we don't yeah. have anyone like that. So, uh, so definitely not Turbo Squid. And we've made this stadium um, and all the people in it. So let me just take you through a couple of shots. Um, the first one I'll take you through is this transition shot here. So when the guy, the host clicks the hologram and needs to get us into the stadium world. And I'm gonna go switch to, so you can see my UI. Um, I think in Flame 2021, that finally became a hotkey, right? Did I hear that? Or am I violating? violating notes no, or something. We're, 2021 is out. So uh, where, where it became a hotkey to... Uh, to switch between OVA. screen grab and, and, uh, and view selected. Oh, I didn't know about I, that. I think I'll, it look, did. I'll look that it's, up. It's something that I do like every day, like several times a day when I'm in se when I was in the, se the session days at least. Yeah. That has wanted to be a hotkey for a long time. And when I read that, I was like, oh, thank you. That's amazing. That's great. Uh, when I, if I ever make so, it back to my office, I can't wait for it to show that. <laughs> So we have a giant batch tree here. Uh, this is restored straight from the archive. I didn't clean it up much, clean it up uh, at all for the demo. And I'm gonna just take you through a couple of the plates uh, that I used to build this. Um, so on this job, about halfway nope. through it, I decided to switch to- um, Hey, Brian, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, I don't mean to interrupt. Is, uh, it's, it's looking a little chunky on my end. Is it looking good on your end? It does look chunky. Uh, let me. No, I forgot to do is hit the record button because I'm a bad person. So the demo is only starting now, though. So we can. This chunkiness is brought to you by Zoom. By Zoom. Where was that? Why isn't there was a record button at the bottom? Am I not allowed to record? Or is it because you're uh, recording? But you only know what? If you're seeing record? it. If you're seeing it chunky like this, then it's uh, chunky. It was clean, clean before when we tried the other day, right? And yeah. well, you know what? Let's just keep going. It's uh, right. I think we're we, we could be having an internet day if you know what I mean. All right, I'm hitting. I just hit record on this computer. I found the button for it, so hopefully it'll be better. Uh, yeah. If I zoom in, actually, let me just make sure that my broadcast monitor is set to 720. Oh, it's not. Defaulted to oh, 1080. Like Croc monotone, duotone there. Okay, that's much better. Um, Here we go. So yeah, let me zoom out. Everyone cool? It's a little better. That's better. Uh, All right, take better. us through it. All right, so um, I think about halfway through this one, I decided that I was, so we grade um, in, I grade in Luster, uh, and more and more these days in Flame, uh, in the new image node. Um, uh, especially as we, with the kinds of jobs that we've been getting during COVID, I've been doing a lot of flame grading on that because the luster round trip overhead isn't worth it. Uh, but if you have a, a project where you have uh, shot footage instead of instead of uh, a montage of stock clips and repurposed old stuff like the COVID jobs have been, but if you have like where there's an actual shoot, uh, doing it in luster is better and faster still for, for me at least. And so mm -hmm. uh, you can, uh, as part of that uh, connected color, workflow that came out a few years ago, you can do a color session with your clients interactively in Luster and then bounce all of those, uh, the, the nodes per, sh the grades per shot back to batch in Flame. And so then you're able to work behind the grade uh, and you just sort of round trip in and out of scene linear and keep everything clean and then put the grade on the end and then you're working through the, you can look at your comp through the luster grade interactively, which is really, really nice for dialing shots in final. So uh, that's what we did on this one. We, uh, we, we cool. had the clients in as soon as the cut was approved and did a color session because they were feeling the momentum, I guess, and then sent them away for three weeks. Uh, so locked all the grades and then I balanced all the shots over that I needed to to work behind, which in this case was not all of them, but but the main grade for the end, uh, and work through things. So we have um, some an anamorphic plate of the oh, and it's not. Let me just check my broadcast options here. Scale clip to fit monitor. Do you want to turn that off? I love anamorphic I want, footage. I want so to show much. there. Okay, there's. I just had to zoom out more. All right, so. 
We have the guy by himself clicking the remote. We have the car by itself with the little whip pan on the end because the director mm -hmm. wanted to do whip pan. And then we have the soccer play, and I'm not linear, sorry. I don't use color management because I'm a Luddite. Uh, and so we have the log C plate of the soccer team running and that's that's our Maradona with his awesome 80s caterpillar mustache and the short shorts and all that stuff and, and this mm -hmm. the uniforms were all designed to be as close to but not legally implying uh Argentina and England and all that stuff so it's it's close but it's not quite the same uh, not exactly the same so um so the first between thing that I do, and the, between that and the turbo squid stuff I'm uh or I'm, I'm de detecting a pattern like a theme <laughs> for this spot yeah uh, so we have camera tracks for everything. Um, we have, and in order to do that, um, and for those of you that haven't done, that don't have extensive anamorphic visual effects experience, if you hope to track anything at all, like at all, at all, you have to manage the lens distortion. You have to. Um, a lot of times with, when I do camera tracking on spherical stuff, you can get away without grids. Uh, if you're doing any kind of serious work, or like even a screen comps on anamorphic tracking, if you don't take the lens distortion out, it's gonna hose you. So uh, we um, shot grids of everything. So they had the main, they had an Alexa Mini and then they had a Phantom and they had this whole series of anamorphics. And uh, you might recognize that is Blake Huber's hand there from uh, hey. Logic, remember him? He's probably not on you right now because he lives in Amsterdam now and works for Glassworks there. So it's probably like three in the morning. Um, but he's in one of these shots somewhere. So we have, we got, got them. There's Blake. There he is. Um, so he was our man in LA on this one, or one of our many men in LA on this one, people in LA. So we got, we got lens charts for the whole, whole shebang, 28, 35, 45, 55, 65, 80, <laughs> and 110 uh, on the Phantom. Same thing on the uh, Alexa. And then uh, there was a zoom that they used on the um, a 35 to 140 zoom that they used on the, on the Alexa. And we had them profile that at various focal lengths on the zoom. Uh, so then we you do all that. And then a, a large part of my job on this was like VFX souping is like a spreadsheet of like who's going to manage what. And this shot, you know, shot 20, shot 12 is on the 25 millimeter this and the plate lives here. And it ends up being a lot of administrative stuff. And like, so I took, one or two of the hard shots and then parceled a lot, like parceled out a lot of these to other people. I think Paul Roski's came in and helped us on this and rocked a bunch of them. And a couple of our, like Blake helped on some and some of our, Chris and Steve, uh, my co my super capable coworkers at Flavor helped on some. So you, uh, we did all of our tracking in, um, in PF track, because that's what we know. Uh, and that produces a track shot. And then once you profile the lens distortion through there, it gives you an ST map. Woo! And this is the one for the, I, don't, I don't actually don't know which shot this is because my naming scheme sucks, but it's whatever this one was on. So that gives you an undistorted, you use this uh, UV, UV warps uh, matchbox. Uh, everything, this has to be the, it has to be 32 bit float for it to work cleanly. Uh, and so we did this UV warp Boop, 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 to get there. And then that gives you still, it still uh, has the anamorphic squeeze in it, but it has straightened out all the lines. And then um, you get really wide. And I, I just squished it down to half res, like uh, to, just to work on stuff. And ideally, uh, if you work this way all the way, or this, it's not ideal to work this way all the way through because you're introducing artifacting into the plates. You're, uh, there are filtering transforms and stuff like that. And you kind of don't want to do that. Uh, in this case, the shot was moving a lot. Uh, and I started to, re I, I built it the easy to work with way first, like where we were running the plates through the distortion. And then I started to rebuild it uh, where I was just overing the comp bit, the, the comp bits onto the original plate. And I, it made almost no difference. And some of the other shots, even the hero shots of the car, uh, I did have to re-architect the trees to not like have the distortion in it. But in this case, it just didn't, I, I, I you know, put it at 500% zoom and AB between those like, eh it's fine it's going on youtube so uh i, I just kept it uh with the distortion all the way through because i'm a bad person it's going on youtube uh, at 360p <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so um you'll notice that the guy plate is moving and the car plate is moving and we have to get the guy into the car and this is not moco so i did that thing uh that i do every once in a while which was 
after I camera tracked the shots, I loaded up Alan Letary's YouTube video on how to 3D camera stabilize uh, a shot that has that is now so old that it has the uh, pre-rewrite flame UI on it. But it's the the, uh, the old ways are the best ways, and it still works. So I use that to oh, that's the zooms right on it to 3D stabilize the guy. You can see he's now stuck here, even with his motion blur that comes in him later. Uh, and then put in, we put in, you know, I did the tracker mark paint out and put in the little phone UI because everyone was looking for that. Um, and then use that to drop him into a camera track that I had done of the car shot, which is probably here. And so, yeah, that's, that's him play, placed in Z space into the track of the car shot, which is this. And then I had to build the transition, which I'll get into in a minute. And then there's the whole stadium comp. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit. Um, as stuff was coming out of CG, it looked kind of like this. This is our Estadio Azteca with our people on our whip pan and our Definitely not Seiko and, you know, definitely not Fujifilm uh, billboards that we, uh, we, we faked in there. Uh, and then did all the lighting and compositing and all that kind of stuff to it, which got us here to sit in the plate. Nice little CG pass. Uh, and then we, uh, we rotoed everything. Uh, and by we, I mean our wonderful overseas roto vendor uh, rotoed everything. Uh, and they're kind of insane. You can see there's, you can see there's like motion blurred hair roto in there. And <laughs> I, yeah, I would hate to be a junior today because I don't know what I would do to get my foot in the door. Um, but we got nice roto for that. We got roto for the, the guy with the remote. We got roto for the guy for the car. Can go full Chicago on you. <laughs> uh, and yeah, needed to then start putting things together. So uh, I had to do some cleanup on the field because uh, there were a bunch of, there were dolly tracks that had to be removed. I can't, this, the zoom thing is killing me. I'm sorry, guys. I'm looking at it on my monitor here and I can see it, but I can't see it on, on the stream. So yeah, there's a, there, you know, dolly tracks had to come out. Uh, and there are a bunch of um, cones, like little, like to help us with camera tracking, we, we threw um, some just little flags, like bean bags, colored bean bags on the ground. So to help us through the, uh, the track and uh, had to paint those out. So those got painted out uh, or I painted them out, clean that up. And then um, the, I did, I did do, do the old college try to key this net and make it work, uh, but I realized I had a camera track and I had Plycubics <laughs> and I had Croc Grid. Uh, so Croc Grid to the rescue. Right no here. need for college. <laughs> no need for college. Um, so, you know, made a nice grid and warped that in and tracked that in. Um, and then because, you know, once you have a camera track, you can start getting away with bloody murder. I had to build this transition out and the whole, like, we went through all this back and forth of the hologram, uh, and the design of it and the initial calls of the director, he, he's like, so have you guys seen the new Blade Runner? Yeah. So you know, that room where the, the woman builds all the memories for the replicants. Yeah. It should be like that. Like, okay. Well, they spent probably eight months on that one environment and had a team. Sure. Yeah. It'll be like that. Okay. No force holograms. All right. We're not going to do like, you know, blue star Wars ghosts or anything like that. It'll be somewhat realistic. I'll put some, you know, Sapphire warps through it and some texturing and we'll make it look nice. So that's what I ended up doing. Uh, we had to, um, where is that? Looking like an idiot. Let's because I'm after it. So basically I pulled a bunch of roto and then resituated things to the camera track and then used these various mad fade outs to make the final shot work. Uh, we also had to, had to add extensive motionography to the vehicle. 
which my wonderful Cinema 4D motionographing colleagues made, um, which led to all sorts of interesting conversations like, what's lens distortion? When you, because when you're a C4D <laughs> After Effects MoGraph person, like that's just not something you ever have to deal with. You're like, why can't you just give me 1080 plates? Well, it's fine. And they eventually I, I were kind enough to humor me um, and we got through it. So you know, there's, we're adding all this, you know, these light sweeps from the car. Um, there's a uh, UI of the above view camera, which is really the only thing that's important to the client in here. Uh, that the guys showing the cameras around of the vehicle are showing what's happening in the play. Uh, and then we put it all together and throw the luster grid on it, luster grade on it, and add some film grain and turn off our linear lookup table. You can kind of shuttle through it and it looks pretty righteous. That's wild, man. Where's the worst? Yeah, that, there's, there's the, uh, the thumbnail frame right there, the guy's butt. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, it came out looking, <laughs> looking super dope. Uh, and so, yeah, we probably had to blow it up a little bit to get the, uh, the parts for the lens didn't cover the sensor on the side out, you know, so I think the final was probably more like that. Uh, not that I have it right here in my other tab or anything. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the final framing there. So it's a fun shot. Uh, and then we had to do more of the same for the next couple. Uh, they were on a, like an ATV quad bike sitting on the back of it with the camera and like the you know big anamorphic glass on it riding down the side of the racetrack at the uh like the foot racetrack at the the soccer field to get these shots uh and so it was just another one of those there it's the same same jam as one before fewer moving parts right we have uh roto for the players we have a camera track uh we have a cg stadium and crowd uh we have a luster node putting the grade on at the end and this one and that one uh, this was a simple screen comp roto uh i think I think they, may were, they were nice enough to put green into the television for us on this one, but remember, <laughs> down, down. Nope, it's black. So that's still a pretty easy little right. key there, right? With a little bit of roto. And it, and it, yeah, right, it, it'll look great. So um, to do that, there's actually a, stadium, a CD stadium and crowd inside that TV <laughs> for like a couple <laughs> frames, like right there. Uh, so we had to do that too. Uh, but there we were. Uh, is that an, is that an one, RM450 edit controller next to the TV also? Uh, it might be. Whatever that giant knob is there. For a three quarters, a quarter deck. Yeah, they had to source yeah. all this from a vintage. Uh, let me see if I can find the plate. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if I'm blown up on it or not. Uh, I do have the plate. That's awesome. Let's go in here. Let's look at it. Yep. I don't know. Is it? <laughs> ah. Takes, Takes me back, back to my... It? My NYU recorded. days. Yeah. So, all right. So there that is. Uh, let's go back to our layers. Many, many layers. You're hundred percent right, though, man. If you have a 3D track, you can almost do anything. Like, if if you have 3D I, track in Roto, it's like game changing uh, in terms of like reformulating your approach to. Okay, how am I going to tackle the task? You know. Absolutely. The, the one that I still haven't figured out how to do in Flame, and maybe you guys can clue me in on this, uh, is I saw a Nuke demo probably eight or nine years ago at an AB where you can um, UV unwrap projected stuff. And so it was like, it was from one of the, it was a Jet Li mummy movie where there, there were all the terracotta soldiers and they had a camera track and they had, because it's a, a Hollywood triple, yeah, a big budget blockbuster action movie, they had a scan of Jet Li. So they had a Jet Li, he a CG Jet Li head. <laughs> but they then, ob they object tracked it on, as he's like moving through the scene, right? So they object tracked the head into the, the tracked camera, right? And then project the plate back onto that, which gives you just the plate, but on his face and they UV unwrapped it, right? So mm -hmm. um, they then were able to make him cry blood tears and like met his face <laughs> melt and, and just with paint, like, cause it was like it, it, his head's moving like this in the shot and they un UV unwrapped it and locked it. And then just went doo -doo 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 and did paint on it and then reprojected it back through and it all went through 
back through the track and the projection and he's you know cry, like his face is turning from human into like melted mud oh watery mud stuff and it was awesome it, just from a demo standpoint i was like holy shit well i'm never going to get the talent's head so i don't know when i would be able to actually use that but i had car geometry on this one i probably could have used it for the cars uh if i ever mm -hmm. had to clean you know, take a camera reflect you know crew reflection out of it or something like that i don't know mm -hmm. if that's if it's one for the one for the peanut gallery and the, the assembled audience if there's a way to do that now uh to like to lock a project with a, uh, a uv unwrap uh, a projected texture onto an object and then project it back in uh I haven't been able to, to get that to work. I, I think you couldn't for a long time and they added a thing a while ago that maybe you can, but with projectors, but I, I couldn't get it to work when I did it because I'm old and bad and lame. So it's a new <laughs> trick though. I'm old and so, bad and lame. So moving on. Um, Brian, so this how, one many here, flames, how many flames do you have at the, at the office or on your, on your we, team? How big is the team? We have, we have uh, six artists now, uh, no assistants anymore because that's how we roll in 2020. Uh, yeah, it was, it was just three of us for a long time and then we grew and added two juniors and then we, uh, we picked up a guy, a uh, local uh, or an international legend, Rob Churchill. Uh, who, is, uh, who was in town, he was my direct competitor for a very long time. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Uh, and he joined us as part of getting something else going that I don't know if they ever announced. There's like a, I, I can't talk about it yet. He's, he's involved with a larger business venture with Cutter Studios. But for now, he's our flame bro and he's freaking awesome. Uh, so Sweet. yeah, there's six, six of us. Uh, and we're not all in our forties, but most of us are. <laughs> there's there's a, a nice lady in her late twenties and a, a gentleman in his early thirties, uh, Patrick and Allison. Shout out if you're on, on this right now, or if you're watching it later, you guys all rock. I love working with you. Uh, so yeah, there's six, six flame artists. We have probably four or five MoGraph people, uh, three Maya artists, uh, three or four After Effects artists, and a couple of producers, three producers of flavor. And that's our, that's our VFX team. Yeah, not, not huge, not tiny either. So uh, on this one, uh, we had Paul Roski's, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, freelance working on it. Uh, and it was his job to do the freeze frame. So he ended up having to like uh, do the, re do a lot of rebuilding in the background to cover, like to keep the, uh, the, the freeze frame working and rebuild the guy and rebuild the people behind him uh, to do all the tracker removal and the, the track for the um, UI on the phone, all that stuff on this one. Uh, and then that brings us to this shot, uh, which is the next one I'm gonna demo, which is the phantom shot of the play leading up to it. So I'm gonna show you first the plate for this because phantom is fun. Uh, <laughs> I saved it somewhere handy, and now I can't remember where I saved it. Oh, I know what I did. Let me do the batch, and then let's find the shot. That's the time warp. Here it is. All right, and this will be distorted, so bear with me. Can you see it? Hmm. <laughs> There's that crowd tile. Thanks, yep. guys. Production, you guys rule. <laughs> they did a great job. Like the, the stuff that they should, like the frames are freaking gorgeous. So like I shouldn't. I, I'm being a bitchy post guy and bagging on them, and I shouldn't. But they they did an amazing job where it counted. So you can see him going up for the header. Still going. Going for it. So close. Do, 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 then he hits oh. he does actually hit it, but we couldn't show that. Uh, and so yeah, that was 1134 frames of plate that became uh, in the cut 41 frames of finished edit. Oh, so man. If, if that isn't a metaphor for what it means to be like a flame artist in 2020, I don't <laughs> I don't know what does. I'm sorry. I continue. No, it's all good, man. So I I'm gonna, this is this is the one fun little uh, maybe useful thing that I can pass on in parts of the group uh, on this one working on this shot. So we looked at that and went, "Holy fuck! Do we really need to roto all that? That's nonsense." Uh, so we're gonna bake it in, uh, and so I baked in baked in the time warp, 
I, I made them commit to it. I made the editor and the agency say like, hey, just so you know, you guys shot a 1200 frame shot. And for us to render 1200 frames of 4K stadium is asinine. Uh, I was a little more polite than that. I was like, it's going to take weeks, like, or, you know, days and days. Or the, 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 bill, the bill at Zinc is going to be like $4,000 every time we have to iterate this. Let's just, are you happy with it? Do you like it? Can, can you understand that it's going to take some time to redo it if you, if you, if you have to change it? Yes? Okay, great. Bake the time warp. So bake the time warp, pull the road on the time warp. And then um, I took the time warp curve. I, did the, I built it using the um, timing functionality and not speed to match it, to match what the editor did. And then I copied mm -hmm. that animation channel and you can't see any of this. I pasted it into the X position of an axis and exported that as a film box to the Maya team. And they were able to take that animation curve then and scale it and then use that to um, ramp not only the animation cycles on the, um, the, the crowd in the back, uh, mm -hmm. but also the shutter of the camera. So when they, uh, they, the motion blur is correct coming out of CG and that it goes, this time warp goes so fast you can't tell, but uh, in this case, instead of like in the other shot where I phoned it in with the distortion pipeline, in this case, if you were to actually watch, like play the thing back, our crowd would be moving correctly for the time. The cheering motion would be sped up appropriately for the time warp and locked in. So- um, Dude, that's a fantastic tip, you know, to get a time warp information out is to copy and paste your, your, the, uh, the timing variable into, um, like you said, into, the, into an axis, which you could then spit yeah, out by FBX. That's a great tip. Yeah, because Maya doesn't have like a, like a time warp node, but I was like, well, what can they get? Okay, well, they can take a position and it's as long as it's, you know, they, that's the frame and then they can do some math on that to convert that into Maya time or Maya shutter angle or you know, normalize mm -hmm. it or whatever they need to do with expressions to make it work. And they, and they did and it worked out great. Uh, so that was our that was our clever trick on this one. So we had just to keep going. Um, you know, we had again hair roto on phantom footage. <laughs> you know, there's no path for a junior. Look his hair, like it's like look at that. It's crazy. Uh, it's a beautiful. It's so thing. good. Beautiful thing. And you know that cost twenty dollars. <laughs> <It's laughs> heartbreaking. So we have, have the other players. And they, you know, they do the focus rack on it. You see it's blurry there and then it's, it's sharp and yeah. So, you know, there's not, you know, crazy high frequency detail on, on their clothes. You have the other guys, the, the rest of the crowd wrote it together. Um, and then just had to put all the, all the plates together, right? So we had a render um, coming out of Maya, uh, the artist that worked on this. Uh, is named uh, Emily J. Reviler. You might notice EJB right there. <laughs> so uh, that's that. Um, and you can see the little, all the little like Sims people oh, yeah. that are there. We have this, this shot in particular from the boards, we had all sorts of internal discussions about like, is this going to work? Is it not? We don't know. And so before the production, and I'm, I still get shit about this, um, I spun up our production company and said, hey, can we take over some space at our office and do green screen tiles of our uh, coworkers? <laughs> and so we have, I have a bunch of my coworkers like jumping up and cheering and like being disappointed and uh, high-fiving each other. And so far, all we've done is we turn, turn it into a gifts of each other for company email yeah. chains. <laughs> uh, and it, it, it burned like the, uh, the junior director's day probably, and I made them rent a light. So it wasn't like we burned thousands and thousands of dollars on it. Uh, but I probably did burn a couple hundred bucks in my company's money on it, and at least a day of someone's time. So for that, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, but it's been great for the Amazing. email friends, uh, for the memes. And so you can see the people do look a little, a little sim, like not great, but we weren't really looking at them. They're going to be out of focus and through a heavy vintage grade. And as mm -hmm. the shot developed, it became apparent that this was going to work just fine. And so none of my coworkers actually made the final cut. Uh, sorry, everybody. But the CG Stadium uh, that we definitely did not buy off Turbo Squid uh, worked fantastically well. <laughs> so, so yeah, same, same jam on this one. Uh, remember when you're blurring anamorphic, it's twice as hot. The blur aspect is twice as high as it is wide. Uh, have a nice plate there. Um, did the same distortion stuff. I showed you the grids for that. Um, did the, the PF track uh, distortion round trip on this one. And that came out looking, that's, this is the behind the grade version, I think, right? Yes. Uh, and it came out just looking fucking fantastic, I think. It's great. Um, and if I put the grid on it and turn off linear, 
Like there's, that's the one for the magazines. So uh, it came out just <laughs> super, super dope. But the people, yeah, the people hold up fine, right? No one's yeah, looking at, totally. at what they're doing and uh, you know, if it looks right, it is right. So right. Uh, that, that was that one. Uh, and then we were just more of the same, right? To the rest. So we had another camera track here. This one was Phantom. Uh, I will show you, rather than taking you through the whole tree, I will show you that he was put on wires and told to hold real still. Oh, yes. <laughs> the wires went That's amazing, dude. Dude, that's wonderful. I think there's a rig maybe for the other guy. Uh, yeah, that looks like it might be on a, on, a, on a pipe or something. Or something. So he was like, just hold still. Hopefully the wind won't blow your hair. And they shot this one. I think this one was shot. This one was shot on the Alexa, not the Phantom. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that became that. Uh, and then we just had to put the state road him out. Key him, put the stadium behind him, <laughs> make the ball not touch him. Uh, and then this other one was all. It was just the, these last couple of um, shots. To you can see the guy. It looks like the guy on the left is going to slide tackle or slide and, and trip the guy on the right. And he goes, oh, no, we're not. I'm, I'm just going to jump. Here's a wink. And that's the end. Um, mm -hmm. So I could take it to you a little more, but I think now is probably a great time to see if anyone has any questions or wants to take pot chats at me for being an asshole or <laughs> however you want to play it. I'm just remembering, like, uh, I, I did. I definitely did my fair share of, like, the, the Matrix bullet time, you know, frozen moment things when that was popular. And then at the end of its popularity, like I had clients who wanted it, but they couldn't afford the rig. And so we totally had like some guy like standing on a turntable, you know, just trying to stand still. And there's like three crew members rotating him around, you know, Amazing. the same kind of thing. Oh my well, God. That, that those get done now where people, they, they just tell people to hold as still as possible. And then they camera track the shot and rig remove stuff. I, there was a guy, uh, it was probably Daniel Kelly or someone from Logic that did that and showed it off a couple of years ago. It was for a Canadian oh, car yes. dealership or restaurant chain. And it worked amazingly yeah. well. Like it's just, you can tell people holding still and it looks like a frozen moment and they CG'd in like all the things that you couldn't freeze, right? Like the coffee pot getting tossed into midair and the big stack of papers going up and all that. And like, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a clever guy. Yep. It worked out really well, I thought. Totally. I remember that. I've got two questions for you. <clears throat> First is coming from Nino on, Nino on Facebook. Wants to know, how did you deal with the uh, motion blur of the players? Because the vendor supplied uh, feathered roto and the background of the plate is pretty light compared to the CG stadium, which is quite dark. Um, uh, pixel spread, uh, aggressive mm -hmm. pixel spread because it was moving so fast. Uh, that was a thing. And you can kind of, if I'm being honest, you can kind of see it here a little bit uh, <laughs> on the guy as he runs past. Uh, he, he is pixel spreaded heavily uh, on the, sh the part in particular where he's, uh, where he's not uh, as blurry. Uh, mm -hmm. And then um, it, it just ended up feeling like rim light to me. And so I, I didn't go through a frame at a time and paint it darker on the edges, mm -hmm. which is what I would have done uh, in a shot like this where it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames or something like that. I would have gone in probably with the, uh, the drag brush and paint, which Hello. I only discovered recently. Oh my God, where has it been my whole career? It's amazing for stuff like that. It's been so, in desktop paint. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, it's in batch now and it works. So yeah, I would have gone through and like, thing. you know, gone drag, 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 and then just to kind of to seal, seam that together a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, Nino, uh, there was a, a post in Logic on July 10th from, uh, the question was posted by Charlotte Cook, who had a similar question about dealing with uh, the edges through motion blur. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, there was one of the comments was uh, from a guy named Chris Howard, who posted a, a frame grab of, uh, of his schematic using uh, two uh, matte curves nodes. And, uh, and it, it's a really, really great technique. So uh, I'll, I'll post uh, a, a still frame of this so I can, I can maybe screen share it real quick. Hold on. No, it'll stop yours. I'll, I'll post it in the, in the chat. Um, but definitely yeah, look for I, that, if, Charlotte Cook on July 10th. Yeah, that's a great, a great trick in particular for using green screen people and trying to, to key green screen into different backgrounds for anything semi-transparent, like it, it can really, really, really help. I agree, mm -hmm. it's a good one. Uh, Jason from Facebook wants to know, is there a link to the final spot that they can check out? 
uh, if I can find it, uh, I'd have to look. Uh, YouTube, the name of the spot is called Generation Adelante. It was on their uh, Nissan's social media channels during the World Cup and then it disappeared. So, uh, uh, genera Generation Adelante, let me see if I can find it. Not. That's all right. You know, we'll we'll commercial. we'll we'll track it down, or if we can track it down, Jason, we'll put it in uh, in the um, I'll put it with the in the in the description, like the show notes uh, with this episode when I put it up on Logic TV. Yeah, I if you're okay with risking uh, the ire of uh, Nissan's copyright lawyers, uh, I'm happy to just spit out a pro res of this for you if you want with sound, Andy. I, I think it'd be fine if it's buried in the middle of this. I don't think anyone's going to know, but that's up to okay. you and your appetite for, uh, for risk. <laughs> hey, it, you know what? It could be like the turbo squid thing that we don't, that we don't use, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, but I'd be happy to, happy to send it to you the sound. So love it. Cool. And then, um, who was it? Uh, John from, uh, our, from the live stream here was wondering if you, if you could uh, share the name of the roto company that you use. Uh, yeah, there, uh, it's a uh, studio eight effects. Uh, they're, um, studio eight fx.com. They work on the Marvel movies and stuff. There's a lovely uh, woman there named Casey Padini. who used to work at company three out in LA. Uh, her brother was Grizzly Adams. Fun personal fact about Casey Padini. Um, <laughs> and fun fact. I think, I think he recently passed. So maybe don't bring that up, but, um, oh. but I'll they to, I'll have to edit that out. <laughs> don't know. Uh, they're fantastic. Uh, they, yeah, they, they have all the security stuff. They have a Spera. Uh, mm -hmm. They can turn around stuff pretty quick and they're, they're good and cheap. Uh, generally they can do camera tracking and other stuff, although we've only had them do that once or twice. Uh, we generally, but I've used them for Roto for 10 years. And they're, yeah, they're, I'm looking at their, their website and there's once, once upon a time in Hollywood, Spider-Man Far From Home, Captain Marvel, Game of Thrones, Wonder Woman, Black Panther, Crazy Rich Asians, all that stuff. So, um, cool. Yeah, they also, a fun, fun story about them doing visual effects that I'll, I'll share with you guys. We had, um, we had to do some cleanup on someone, like some beauty work, uh, and it was eye bag removal, and there was a client in town that asked for our reel on that, and they went, that's great. Uh, can you do a 25-minute interview? Uh, and we went, no, no, we can't. <laughs> we don't have the balance to do 25 <laughs> minutes of eye bag removal on that and we ended up sending it to studio eight and they did the whole thing and it was uh lisa marie presley being interviewed by oprah and then and so they did wow uh, 25 minutes of that for 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 miss winfrey uh mm -hmm. and she comment the comment that she made was that looks amazing i want you guys to do all of my interviews <laughs> when she saw it and i don't think they do but but they did lisa marie, lisa marie had had a had a rough night the night before her interview a couple you know 10 15 years ago and they did all like a whole thing off of you know interlaced video off of hd cam and all that stuff and did all the cleanup and did it for, I don't know, 50, 60 grand or whatever it was that they had to do that 25 minutes that we couldn't touch. So bless them. Yes. Oh goodness. Does, um, does anybody have any other questions for Brian? I think we're good, man, dude, that was phenomenal. Right. Thank you so much. That was great. Brian, thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you for the uh, the invite. I wanted to demo this one forever, and then it just got done after NAB that year, and then Autodesk stopped doing NAB, and like I was like, this is the perfect thing. Let me like let me be in the booth, and started pinging people, and they're like, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Sorry. Uh, so I would, um, thank you for giving me I, an outlet for it. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thank you. And uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't, you know, point out that we, you know, we we happen to be wearing the same shirt. You know, strange coincidence there. Andy, Andy's is backwards though. <laughs> Oh, damn it. Oh, well, you know what? Or is it you have your flames? No, no, I'm backwards. See? All right, yeah. Oh, really? I don't have my Zoom mirror turned on. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. Why well, look? Why. This is my better angle, and I never get to see myself. I've never looked better. I agree. I agree. You look thank fantastic. you so much for agreeing. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks Dude. everybody. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks uh, to Census and AJA and all the all the friends there, Keeney and Steve and, and uh, everyone who keeps us running. Uh, and thanks to everyone for coming to watch me uh, blather on a Sunday evening. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. Oh wait, I'm sorry. We got one final question. What was the time frame on the whole job? Uh, so the VFX part of it was like three weeks. Uh, we had probably the color grade was the first day, and then we spent three weeks working on the rest of it. Uh, the editorial took a little bit longer than that beforehand. It was a I think it was a 
five day shoot on this, but there are three, three minute long or four minute long uh, web videos with uh, feature demos and all sorts of other stuff that I'm not showing you. This is just the fun, thir the fun broadcast 30 uh, that was all lumped into that. So this probably took like a week and a half to do. And then the OLVs took the other uh, staggered uh, week and a half on top of that, if I had to guess. Still a week and a half, is a, that's a quick turnaround for something like this, man. That's great, great job, great work. Thank you, thank you very much. You got it. All right, let me share my screen here and we'll close it out. All right, so coming up next week on Logic Live, we have Andy Davis, who's got some amazing tricks up his sleeve he's gonna share with us. That's followed on the 26th by Naveen Srivastava. August 2nd, we're gonna have an interview with Autodesk Fred Warren. August 9th will be uh, Chicago's own Randy McEntee. Get ready, Randy. Woo. And August 16th, using flame with shotgun, which uh, was a suggestion from the community. So if anybody does have any suggestions for things they'd like to see in the future Logic Live, please let me know. Also, the Logic Podcast is available. We launched it last week. I wanna thank everybody for all the great feedback. There are two episodes up now, and uh, I'm gonna to try to have another one ready for you next week, uh, within the, the, the next week or so. Um, I've got a few in the, uh, in the queue, but if anybody has any suggestions, please feel free to send them my way. And be sure to check out logic.tv for, uh, for, for all kinds of great content, all the past Logic Live episodes, of course, the Logic Podcast, uh, Logic Fest, tips, tricks, tutorials, links. And uh, please take a few minutes to uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And this episode of Logic Live is brought to you by AJA. AJA develops an extensive range of solutions for the professional video and audio market. We want to thank them for always supporting the Logic community and uh, they make the best stuff around. So if you need anything when it, uh, uh, IO related, get it from AJA at AJA.com. And also a thank you to Synesis Oceana, solutions, integration, and support for digital content creators. Uh, find out all, of the, all about them and everything they have to offer at Synesis.io. That's going to do it for Logic Live this week, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>